throughout the years, there certainly has been some shady operations conducted behind the scenes that sometimes we don't hear about until years later. From plans to instigate war, to mind-altering experiments, to just some of the most ambitious projects I've ever heard of. We are going to be talking about all of this and more as we cover the top 10 abandoned military projects the government tried to cover up. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Operation Northwoods. This is an operation that comes from the time of the Cold War, and it has to do with the tense relationship that was seen between the United States and Cuba at the time. This is the first time we will be talking about this tense relationship on this list, but it won't be the last. Operation Northwoods, should it have gone forward, would have been a project that saw violence committed against the US and Cuban civilians, with the blame placed on the Cuban government. Messed up, right? These acts would include faked attacks of a high magnitude, the hijacking of planes, the sinking of boats, like really serious stuff. They wanted to do this in order to justify an all-out war with Cuba, but thankfully some people at the time had decided that this likely wasn't the smartest or the best route to take, and the idea was scrapped. For a long time, this was hidden from the public until years later documents were revealed that showed this dark, dark truth. In our number 9 spot today, we have Psychic Driving. Part of the famous Project MK Ultra, this experiment was conducted by British psychiatrist Donald Ewan Cameron, who created the psychic driving concept that the CIA found interesting. Basically, psychic driving was a procedure that subjects patients to a continuous, repeated audio loop of something that is intended to change their behavior. Basically, the patients would be exposed to hundreds of thousands of repetitions of a singular statement through the course of their treatment, and they would also be subjected to paralytic drugs that would subdue them while being exposed to this looped message. Yeah, so the CIA heard about this idea for a treatment, and they thought, hmm, sounds cool, and they started sending money to fund Cameron's experiments, but he actually didn't know it was coming from the CIA because they used a front. So Cameron's psychic driving experiments for MKUltra began to take place in Canada. I guess they said that the aim of the experiments were to get rid of, or cure, someone of schizophrenia by erasing existing memories and reprogramming the psyche. I'm not sure that's how schizophrenia works, but I guess they did. Cameron would subject patients to LSD paralytic drugs, and electroconvulsive therapy that was 30 to 40 times the normal power. He would also put the experiment subjects into drug-induced comas while exposing them to the repetitive audio. The experiments were mostly conducted on patients who entered the institute for more common problems like anxiety disorders or postpartum depression, and they ended up leaving with permanent effects from his actions. These included things like urinary incontinence, amnesia, being unable to speak, some people forgot their parents and thought that the interrogators were their parents, it clearly completely altered those who were participating in these horrible and certainly unethical experiments, all up until the experiments ended up being scrapped. In our number 8 spot today, we have Operation Washtub. This operation came to light in 2014 when documents became declassified and more people could learn about this Cold War era operation. Basically, this was a covert mission that had its sights set on Alaska. The plan detailed the training of different people who lived in Alaska. Like, we're just talking ordinary residents. They wanted to train these people to both code and decode and a few other like cool spy tactics. I mean, I would have wanted to be picked so badly. Not that I would have even known it was happening, but you get what I mean. Like, real life spy mission? No problem, I'm in. Basically, the plan was put in place in case the Soviet Union was to invade Alaska, but then these unsuspecting ordinary citizens would use their newly learned espionage techniques to get all the intel they could and secretly relay the information to high-ranking US officials. As we now know, of course, this invasion never occurred, so the contingency plan wasn't needed, but 89 lucky temporary agents were trained just for this purpose what I would give to be one of them. In our number 7 spot today, we have Operation Midnight Climax. This experiment took place in the 1950s, and it was one of those mind control research projects that was sponsored by the CIA. We've already talked about one. So basically, they wanted to study the effects of LSD, but instead of finding willing participants, which, let's be honest, probably wouldn't have been that difficult, but instead, they used non-consenting people who were lured to safe houses by workers who were being paid by the CIA, and then once at these safe houses, they were slumped the drug and monitored from behind a one-way glass. For over a decade, the project gave the government more knowledge about the drug itself and what it does to the mind, it gave the knowledge about surveillance technology, and even sexual blackmail. In the end, the project was shut down in 1965 because, uh, 
I don't really have to explain that one, do I? In our number six spot today, we have medication. This is something that is actually seen in military prisons or detention centers such as Guantanamo Bay. Basically, this is more of a practice rather than like an experiment or an operation, but it's the force feeding of illicit or psychoactive chemicals to prisoners, some of whom are then interrogated afterwards. I absolutely do not have to explain why this is unacceptable practice as it is not only a violation of medical ethics, but also a violation of human rights. Many times these sorts of chemicals are given without the prisoners being aware of what it is, and sometimes not even being aware that they are ingesting it at all. There was a huge scandal about this one when documents became declassified and it was released that this was something that was going on at Guantanamo Bay. Some of those being kept here were dosed with a heavy psychoactive medication that is known to make a person groggy, and then subjected to interrogations afterwards. In our number five spot today, we have Project Horizon. Even before people were going to space, we had big goals goals in mind for the world of space travel. In 1959, there were plans for a proposed manned military base that would be located, of course, on the moon. This plan, which was dubbed Project Horizon, would, quote, develop and protect potentially United States interest on the moon, as said in now declassified documents. It was estimated at the time to cost about $6 billion, and the projected operational date was December of 1966, which is when they thought that they could have 12 soldiers on base by. The project not only wanted to study more about the surface of the moon, but what better of a place to spy on Earth than our friendly little neighbor up there in the sky. This project, of course, never came to fruition, and the reason it stopped progressing was because the president at the time, Dwight Eisenhower, rejected it at the same time that the responsibility for America's space program was being transferred over to NASA. In our number four spot today, we have heavy consideration. Presidential duties certainly are not easy, and making big, important decisions is likely a very nerve-wracking experience that you'd probably want as much information as possible for. That is exactly exactly why, around the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis, Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman Maxwell Taylor wrote a memo at the request of the then President John F. Kennedy. The memo was requested because Kennedy wanted to know what the human cost would be of invading Cuba. The declassified memo explained that should Cuban forces use conventional weapons and not tactical nukes, that Quote, our medical plans are drawn up to accommodate up to 18,500 casualties in the first 10 days of this operation. He then also goes on to explain that if these tactical nuclear weapons were in fact used, that quote, there is no experience factor upon which to base an estimate of casualties. That is absolutely terrifying. The number they could estimate is already more than terrible enough. I truly don't even want to hear the next one. And this is just a glimpse into what the outcome could have been should these sorts of plans have actually gone forward. In our number three spot today, we have Project Minaret. This is a document that became declassified in 2013 as a part of the National Security Archives efforts. This historical document describes a sort of watch list of prominent Americans who were critical of the Vietnam War. The document explains that their overseas communications were tapped and listened into by the government from 1967 to 1973, and a quote from the document reads, quote, President Johnson wanted to know if the domestic anti-war movement was receiving help from abroad. The project expanded so much that it went on to include more than 1,600 people, including civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr., Whitney Young, and Muhammad Ali. There were also people like Democratic U.S. Senator Frank Church of Idaho, Republican Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee, New York Times columnist Tom Wicker, and Washington Post humor columnist Art Butchwald. But it continued on through to the Nixon administration. Administration. In the end, the only reason it was stopped was because Attorney General Elliot Richardson was concerned about its very doubtful and murky legality and decided during the Watergate scandal that it would be best to shut it down. I mean, they definitely had enough on their plate already at the time, okay? In our number two spot today, we have Project 1794. This project was created with the goal to build a sort of saucer-type aircraft that would be designed to shoot down Soviet bombers. The program, which was created in the 1950s, was quite ambitious and had some pretty lofty goals. A team of engineers began trying to build a disc-shaped aircraft, but here's the real kicker. They wanted it to be capable of traveling at supersonic speeds at high altitudes. The documents about 
about this project showed that they wanted it to be able to travel at Mach 4, which is four times the speed of sound, and they wanted it to be able to reach an altitude of over 100,000 feet. At the time, the project was estimated to cost about $3 million, which is about $26 million today. In the end, the project was cancelled in 1961 because the craft failed tests and proved to be aerodynamically unstable, which of course would provide a whole slew of problems at high speeds, especially supersonic ones. In our number one spot today, we have Acoustic Kitty. This is one that I've talked about before and I'm talking about it again because I just can't believe that it happened. Apparently, in 1967, the CIA was spending millions of dollars trying to make cats into spies. I don't know why they chose the animal that does not care what you want it to do, but alas, they did, and Project Acoustic Kitty was born. The project basically involved implanting electronic spy equipment into real living cats who would then be trained to basically eavesdrop on unsuspecting people. This is another one of those Cold War era plans that was intended to be used on those in the Soviet Union. The project had a whole slew of issues, of course, however, because cats get hungry and distracted, and unfortunately the first time this plan was being tested, there was a catastrophic outcome. No pun intended. I just said catastrophic, get it? The project of course is canceled and the researchers said that they believed they could train cats to move short distances, but that quote, the environmental and security factors in using this technique in a real foreign situation forces us to conclude that for our intelligence purposes, it would not be practical. And I think that was probably a very good decision. All right guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you again very, very soon, I'm sure. Bye.